Space 101.1 FM KMGP welcomes you to Broken Alaska, the world's only improvised radio drama series. Last week, Mark Shaughnessy, the owner of both Brooks Books and Other Things in the Twisted Dinghy, was acting very strangely. Usually a stable member of Broken Society, Mark ran off in the woods in a fit of snarling, painful despair. Will Mark's friends be able to find him before something even worse happens? Let's have a look inside Brooks Books and Other Things to see what Bert and George are planning. George, would you mind putting down some food for the cats? Oh, sure, no problem. Yeah, thank you. I'll, yeah. And I'll finish uncrating this. <sighs> George, thank you for helping out over the past week. Oh, that's no problem. It's quite worrying, but at least we're keeping Brooks Books and Other Things operating until Mark is back. I'm really surprised how many books are in this crate that they sent us. It's quite a few, I know. And the funny thing is, I don't quite understand Mark's shelving system. Well, it's not the Dewey Decimal System, that's for sure. No, and it's not by any sort of literal thing like uh, there's no sports section for the sports books. It's like he's some kind of book whisperer. He just knows where the books are, and he can sense their placement in the shop. Well, I found one here for Breck Brickman, that's for sure. It's called, <laughs> What It Takes to Be Number One. <laughs> <laughs> A brick could use that. <laughs> You know, the interesting thing about Brick is, he's this big wheeler dealer, but how much has he really changed town? You ever think about that, George? Yeah, I think about it a lot, especially when we have those town council meetings. I think that hotel is some sort of cover that he's working on. You know, with all the women in town, there's a lot of books here for women, and one of them says, Woman's Work. Hmm. Carrie Aguilar? Uh, kind I, of name is that, anyway? I haven't got a clue. Oh, yeah. tur- oh, look at the picture on the back. There she is. Yeah, she's a good-looking lady. There's a book here that says, The Smell of Other People's Homes. I'll be dipped. How does Mark deal with all this? This is such pressure trying to figure out where everything's supposed to go. He just seems to know. Well, I think we're really lucky that we get the cover for him because we learn a lot in here. Well, yeah, of course. I mean... Without Mark, there's not much to do. Really, the only entertainment is going down to the Twisted Dinghy and watching Louise sing once in a while. If you if you get a couple of glasses of wine in her, maybe she'll sing for you, but there's not much else, so reading is really all we have. Yeah, well, I think I'm going to steal this book. It says, The Couple's Next Door. It looks kind of interesting to me. I don't think Mark will mind, do you? No, he loans more books than he sells anyway. That's true. Rose! Hi, Rose. Hey, guys. I saw you over here from across the street at the produce stand. I thought you might want a latte. I brought one over for each of you. Oh, cheers. That's very nice of you. Yeah, we don't have to drink that poison that Mark makes. Oh, his coffee's not so bad. And we don't want to speak poorly of of Mark when he's not even here. You mind if I sit down and join you for a minute? I I brought myself a coffee, too. Please do. I see you've been helping out here all week. Yeah, trying to keep the business going while Mark's gone, you know. That's and then, right. of course, books come in and mm-hmm. this, you know. And feed his cats. We gotta oh, feed yeah. the cats. Yeah, oh, thank you. A little puffy over there. Has anyone heard anything from Mark? No, nothing yet. I, I'm not really worried about Mark. He's, you know, forget, he grew up here. I know, but he's been gone a week and nobody's heard of him. L- look here in my bag. I brought, I brought some topographic maps that I found down at, at Heather's office and... Uh, look, I've laid out a grid pattern, and I was wondering if maybe we should put together a search team and, and we could do this A section today. I, I've tried to make it so that we could do it all in a day, and, and I think if we spread out and we can call each other's names as we're marching through the woods and we can maybe look for them and, and organize a search party. Well, See, we could do A section today, and then over here is the B section. I think in, we could... You know, Rose, we, Rose, yeah? Rose, George has a point. Mark was born here. He knows his way around. He is very in tune with nature and adept at different situations. I don't think you should worry quite so much. Well, I think even someone who was born here could get into trouble in the woods in the wintertime. Yeah, well, what if we got Phyllis Tweed? He could fly his plane around, and, and maybe there'd be a way maybe to, to search via plane, too. I think maybe Mark will come back when Mark is ready to come back. You know, there are things about Mark... Pretty mysterious things what about do you mean? Mark. Well, you probably noticed that Mark has a way with animals. Yeah, that's, that's one of the really interesting things about him, but 
I mean, I've been here for a year and he's been nothing but stable and solid. And for him to just disappear for a week, well, how does his communication with animals have anything to do with that? Have you ever wondered how Mark stays so stable? It's because from time to time, he needs to be in the wild. What are you suggesting? Do you know something you're not telling me? Bert, would you tell me what's going on, please? Even Mark and I don't like to talk about this very much. Talk about what? Bert, tell me what's going on. Where is Mark? Do you know where he is? I don't know where he is, no. But his mother, as you know, she's one of the keen eye. Yes. She's not... How to put this delicately? She's not entirely human. What? She is with the spirits of the woods. Okay. And Mark has inherited some of her gifts so he can speak with the animals. Well, he doesn't really He can speak commune with... with the wind. It's not <laughs> something he likes to talk about. But Are I'm you s- pulling my leg? Bert, come on. You need to be serious. I think there's something really wrong and I'm worried about Mark. He's been gone for a week, and I think we need to organize a search party. Rose, I'm not pulling your leg. You've got to trust that Mark is going to be okay. The wind and the land will tell Mark when to come back. You know what, you guys? If you didn't want to tell me where he was, you could have just said so. You didn't need to make up this crazy story about the wind. Look, all right, fine. I'm going to take my Mavs, and I'm going to go down to Heather's. I'm going to ask her if she's heard anything, but thanks anyway, guys. Thanks for the lattes, Rose. You're welcome. Thank you, Rose. You know, George, I really thought she would believe me. You and I have been here a long time, Bert. Remember when the coyote got loose and got into Felchers? Yes, old man Fletcher was just livid. Well, the coyote had him cornered. Yeah. And Mark came in and talked the coyote down. If Rose could have seen that, she would have believed us. That's very true. Well, Rose will be okay, I'm sure. She'll calm down when he comes back. Well... I think when Mark comes back, I'm going to have him talk to her and tell her the truth about himself. Uh, he won't reveal his secrets. You know she that. deserves to know the truth. You've seen the way he looks at her. Yeah, I think he likes her too. Well, duh. Over at the Harbor Palace restaurant, Annika and Louise are also worried about Mark. But unlike Rose, Annika's plans to find Mark are a little more, shall we say... Exotic? I'm really worried. Well, to be honest, uh, Annika, you don't look so good. Mark's been gone for so long. I mean, it's been a week. Oh, it'll be okay. Don't worry. I mean, he'll come back. It's his home. He can't stay away for long. What if he never comes back? What if he's... Oh, don't say What if something like happened that. to him that's really awful? No, don't worry. Okay. He'll, he'll be back. He has a strong person. He loves broken. He does, doesn't he? Yes. Yeah, okay. So um, don't don't worry. Just enjoy this wonderful meal and just forget about Mark for okay. now. I think it uh-huh. is doing more harm than good. Okay, yes. okay. So Maybe we could help with the search effort. We could. Oh, I, I know. You know, he said once that I smelled really nice and, and I have a I have a whole bunch of that perfume left. It's okay. uh, it's actually kind of musky, so it's kind of funny that and I'll I'll just put that all over me. I'll put it all in my hair and right, I'll okay. go running around in the woods and Mark, Mark, what do you think? You know, that sounds like a great idea. I think okay. you should go for it. Okay, Why good, not? good. Why not? Oh, 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 and he loves holding my hand. Oh, so I'm really? just going to, yeah, so okay, I, I'll yeah. take my gloves off while I'm doing that and running around and I'll just clap my hands. Mark! And I'll do, woo! Mark! Annika, yeah. Oh, yeah. Bert. You think I'm being crazy, don't you? No. Uh... No, 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 Your, your no, no, face no. is saying that you, you think I'm a little crazy. Annika, but you know no, this is just how These my face is. Work because, just have a... you know, he smelled my hair, and he was he was all up in my hair. He's like, I believe your I... hair smells great. And I... then he was saying that all the time when I would put that conditioner in my hair. And he goes, oh, your hands are so soft, and he would hold my hand. So I, I think that that works. Annika, I believe you. I think maybe it might be a little excessive. 
I mean, he's got a great sense of smell, and I know that he would enjoy, you know, I'll just put just my hair in the wind. Just wafting through the wind. Oh, uh, and, and it'll get up on top of, uh, uh, what's the tallest one? That is it the Twisted Dinghy, or is it the bookstore? Which one's taller? And I'll get up there, and, and the wind will catch in my hair, and he'll smell that, and he'll he'll know his way home. You know, yes, I, I love the idea. Just, you know, go up, it's only like negative bajillion degree below freezing and just go for it and you'll just he will come right back i have can guarantee you know you sound sarcastic but i think it's really going to work yeah i think it's going to work too oh maybe i need to you're right i maybe i'm not doing enough so i should roll in pine needles before so i've got that fragrance of the outdoors then i'll be a, up like there a medley going, a I'm medley okay come yeah, you know, I can help get some pine needles with you if you want. Uh, we can go gather or something. Um, I, I need know. help, yes. If it's going to make you feel better, yeah. I have to okay. do something. And I could sing, Mama's little baby love shortening, shortening. Mama's little baby love sh- shortening. Oh, that, now that I can help you with. Oh, good. I can sing. Good, because so, that's his oh, favorite no song. Worry, no worry, he's, he's no worry, he's there. No worry, he's there. He's bookstore and everything. So I'll be up there and I'll go, Mama's little baby love, short and short and Mama's little baby love. Okay, yeah, and we'll be broadcasting for everyone at the same time that we do this. Okay, I like it. I like okay. this idea. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. You have my full support, Annika. I know it's a stressful time, but you know, he will come back. And if you want, if you want to parade yourself with the perfume and the pine needles and the music, uh, you do you, you girlfriend. That's all I got to say. You, you're you're amazing. Thank you for oh. being such a good friend. You're amazing, but a little crazy. Well, but. <clears throat> really, you still think it's crazy? Nothing is crazy for love. Oh gosh, I like that. <laughs> That's really great. <laughs> it's the French in me. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> Uh, Louise and uh, Annika, here's your check. Is there anything else I can get you to go? No, thank you, Dolores. No, merci. Okay, have you heard anything about Mark? And has he been found? No. No. It's sad, really. Yeah, I'm trying to think of some ideas that I think are really going to work. So don't worry too much about it. She has some great ideas. Yeah, I do. Okay, well, just keep me posted. Okay. Will do. You're listening to Broken Alaska, radio's only improvised ongoing drama series on Space 101.1 FM. Visit us on Facebook at facebook.com slash broken AK. Back in Broken, Heather O'Hearn, head of the city council, is trying to convince Sheriff Jim to fly a squadron of seaplanes over the woods in search of Mark. They're in Heather's office at City Hall now. Let's listen. We don't have the budget for what you're proposing. Well, we're going to find some money somehow because I need you to take full squadron planes up and go as high as you can and look for Mark. We must find him. And I say we do a spiral search formation from low altitude so we don't miss anything. Plus, my cat's down there on the job, and I want to make sure I know where he is this whole time. Your cat will be fine. I'm sure he'll sniff things and out and Mark, give us more clues. Mark will be fine. This has gone on a little longer than his normal journey away. You've known him a long time. Have you ever seen him this far gone? Yes. And you think it's just okay that the whole town is up in arms about it. We have to do something. Now, Phyllis Tweed has already taken his plane up and... Didn't he spot uh, some of our locals out there that maybe ran into Mark? Yeah, they were snowshoeing. Yeah, who, was, and who, was, who were those was two Kitty. again? Kitty. Denise and Kitty. Yes, So Denise. are they reliable? Yes, of course. Kitty has lived here her whole life. I take her at her word. Something strange is going on. Stranger. Yes. And I'll talk to Denise and Kitty, as I understand it, that they came across signs of him. There was barefoot footprints in the snow that then suddenly disappeared, so two weird things there. Wait, barefoot footprints or bear prints? Marks, size 11, D, feet, without shoes. And then suddenly, all of that disappeared from the snow. Now, we are going to find the money in the budget. I know we had some expenses with that wedding we were left holding the bag on and you going up with that training that cost a little bit more than anticipated. And if you remember, that expensive training in Fairbanks got us Flash, the crime-fighting cat. Okay. 
I have held my tongue about Flash for long enough, but now you're complaining about expenses? Let's talk about the cat's expenses. We had to build a beautiful house from the ground up to his specifications because he has needs. Oh no, he can't just eat the Purina Chow. No, 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 he has to have live mice. I mean, and it's not just any mice that he'll eat. He has to have the free range, fair trade mice that have to be shipped in from Austinville. To be white mice, and which the are fresh more expensive. Salmon. Don't forget the fresh salmon. The fresh salmon, which has to be prepared and given to him every day. This is costing too much money. Personally, I have had it with that cat. Now, I am an animal lover, but I have to wear gloves because my hands are covered in scratches from grooming and making him beautiful. And aren't cats supposed to take care of their own grooming? Yeah, but this one is a highly tuned crime-fighting machine, and the owner's manual said we need to comb his hair 10,000 strokes a night. Well, my arms are done. 10,000 strokes a night is too much. Okay, agreed. He's had some expenses. I ordered that drone that we can actually strap him to. And do you know how much that drone ended up costing? I took it out of the slush fund. Okay, you never to bring up the slush fund. Okay, we can make some modifications. But, cat stays, Mark's still lost, and we need to uh, create a better uh, search uh, parameter to find him or not worry about him like we've done in other years, and he'll come back at some point. We and need to go up in the air. Okay, I've got some contacts at NSA. Maybe we can get a satellite involved. Ooh, a satellite. I that, think is that high enough for you? Well, yes, but how are we going to make the most out of what we have of this search and rescue mission when we only have four people out there right now? And a cat. And a cat. Let, let me talk to my guys at NSA. Let me let me talk to Phyllis and his gang of, of flying demons. And let's see if we can get a, a, a show of force. Phyllis and his team are serious bush pilots who have done great work for our town for many, many years. And I think you should heed his warning and go higher. Okay. We'll, we'll do it your way first. And then when that maybe fails miserably hypothetically, we'll try it the other way. So speaking of, of slush funds, Heather, mm. uh, mm. Brett Brickman, mm. he'll have some money. I'm going to go see him right now. Oh. I'll get this thing cleared up in 59 and a half minutes. Brett owes me a a few things for a few things. Well, good. Well, let me go have a sit down with him, break out the expensive blue label, and we'll have a go at it. And I'll, I'll make sure we find Mark, and I make sure I'll, I will make sure that we're not affected financially. Well, good. Now go find Mark, would you? He's an important part of this town. Agreed. He is a well-loved citizen, but he has a choice parking spot on Main Street. And oh. during tourist season, I can't find room for my squad car most of the time. You in this parking spot every year we go through this. There's one right next to Mark's. Yes, but the cat doesn't like it in feng shui-wise. It's horrible. Oh, my God. Anyways, let me get over and see uh, the brick man and see if I can work this out. I'll let you know. Well, good. I don't want to have to call the mayor. Well, I, I do want to have to call the mayor, but I don't want to have to call him with bad news or asking him for more money. Fair enough. Give me a couple hours. I'll get back to you. Well, it is true that Brett Brickman always has a good stash of cash squirreled away, but it's also true that he's loath to ever share it with anyone. I'm not sure Sheriff Jim is going to have much luck. Let's find out. Thanks for coming over, Bert. Look, um, you brought the snowmobile keys, right? Yeah, they're right here. All right. Well, I'll tell you what I've done. Yeah. I've got Rose's favorite African blend here because I know that the two of them have been talking about that coffee. The Rwanda Abakunda Kawa. Yeah. 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 So there's five gallons of hot coffee here. I'm going to take it up the five mile mark over the jack hole. I'll put it there and do the same as we did last year. I'll open it up. Open it up, yeah. And I'll just let it waft into the trees. I figure he'd probably be dying for a coffee by now. Good right. plan. So don't tell anyone. I'll be going in a little while. All right. I've just got to get a few things done. But I think that'll help him. I think so. All right, mate. It Thanks might be me. the lifeline he needs. Oh, I think he needs plenty of them. Wish us luck, mate. All right. Cheers, mate. Hey, Joey. Yeah, hey. Yeah, come in for a minute. Yeah, what's up? I've been thinking about starting a whole lab upstairs, and I'm, I've got some equipment coming in. All a right? lab? Yeah, it's, it's like a genetics lab. Um, Ooh. I bought a couple of hundred thousand dollars worth of chemical and lab equipment. 
Wow. Why don't, if you could just wait here until they arrive, they're yeah. going to deliver it. Oh, is that what all the research you've been having me do was about? Yeah. The genes well, yeah. and the G to C and the T to A and Yeah, all and that. pH levels and all that sort of stuff. All right, would you get them to take it to the house yeah. and just put it in the garage and uh-huh. I'll do the rest of it, all right? In the garage? It might be kind of cold in there for such delicate equipment. My car collection's in there, Joey. Oh, right. The garage is heated. Of course. Right? Constant, thought... 69 degrees. And that'll be fine. It's all in boxes. Now, here's a check, all right? All right. But wait, God, what smell? What am I smell? Is that coffee? Um, Ooh, that smells good. Mm. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm checking out some coffees. Oh, uh, could I have a cup? Uh, no. Jeez, all right. Well, I'll just go. Well, to there's your a house. coffee machine in the back right, room. Right. Just go and make yourself one. I'll do that. I'll do that. So you want Haven't me to it? hang oh. out? Yeah, I want you to hang out here till I get here, at yeah. least. And then you can close the office up then, all right? All right. I like that right. you trust me with the key these days. That's cool. I can trust you with my life. Yeah, right. All right, go do your thing, uh, whatever you're doing. I will. I'll go and do it. I'll be here. Hey, Brad, Sheriff Jim. Let me see those hands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> never gets old, does it? No, it never gets old, yeah, Jim. Never, ever. Hey, uh, uh, Brad, i got a favor to ask you, so, sure. to, so to speak. You remember when you were building that mansion on the hill so you could look down on us and... Make well, that your, wasn't the intent. Make all your pontifications upon no. the masses. Yeah. I know. Anyways, back back to back to your house for a minute. So, so the construction crew you got out of Bostonville was, well, they weren't licensed and bonded. We know that for sure. Um, and they left you in a lurch, and and the townspeople picked up uh, literally the Calicata marble, heavy slapped, my friend. You remember that? Uh, a lot of backs went out. There was yes. a lot of uh, a, a, an upspike in medical marijuana licensing after that for a lot of back pain. Anyways. We yeah. could use a favor from you today. Mark's missing. Our budget is real low. We could use some cash. Hmm. Yeah, you, got, I, you, got, you got $1,100, $1,200 bills laying around? If I remember, that was a pretty crappy job of installation. What is everyone that comes up here? If you had twelve or $1,300 bills laying around, it would help the town. Really? 14 at the most. Really? Okay, let's just round up. For what? Two grand. For what reason? We got to go find Mark, don't we? What, you, you got to... Platoon of army soldiers, you got to pay for what? Twelve hundred, two grand. Phyllis, Come on. Phyllis and his boys. That fuel's not free. I could send a dog out for fifty bucks. Well, the cat's already out there. Flash is looking. Okay, well, Boy, whatever. You really want to introduce a dog to to Flash? I wouldn't. Anyways, do some civic duty today. Look, Mark will be fine. He just needs his time. I would leave him completely alone. Tell everyone to stop worrying about it. Go about their normal life. So you and I you? both know that, but now we have a perception issue. Well, you know what? I have suffered from a perception issue my whole time here. And guess what? People's perceptions mean nothing to me. Otherwise, I'd have left a long time ago. Fair enough, but Mark's still missing, and a lot of people are worried he'll never be found. Well, you know, here's the problem, Sheriff. People worry about other people too much in this town. Okay, let's make it simple. We need $650. I'll put in a quarter of it. <laughs> hey, what part of no don't you understand, Jim? All right. Well, if no is no, then um, I guess I'll have to move on to uh, another source of don't waste your cash time. in this town. Don't waste your time. Mark will be fine. Okay. Well, I better go uh, tell Phyllis that he's on his own and to uh, fly lower. Look, Jim, I've got a place I need to be, so... Bye-bye. All right. Hasta la vista. Well, thanks for nothing, Brick. Uh, I knew I couldn't count on you. Uh, by the way, what is that scent of coffee? I don't know. It's very it's strong. It has, if I'm not mistaken, South American overtones? Really? I mean, you're a connoisseur now of coffee as well, Jim. Uh, I've done my research. Oh, you're a very secretive person, aren't you? Well, Goodbye, very. Jim. Yeah, see you, Brick. All right. Oh, Jim, Jim, here you are. Oh, my gosh. Hi, sorry. Hi, anyway, Annika. Uh, Mark's back. He's back. Uh, he's he's here. He's back. Where? Where's here? He, he's on the water tower. What's he oh, doing on the armed? water tower? No, he's not armed. He's naked. Oh, God, even worse. No, not Goodness. really. But, uh, somebody should maybe find a towel. Oh, uh, I'll go to his house. I'll get his clothes. Uh, I, I, I know where he lives and everything. I, I, I know where his clothes are. All right. Well, let's get that organized. Let's go and get him down off the towel, for goodness sake. Yeah. Uh, let me go uh, put that yellow tape around the water tower at the very least so it looks official. Hey, hey, Jim, would you get on the bugles, mate, and let the town know that Mark is back, all right? Call a meeting, whatever you want to do, but make sure that everyone is aware of this. I will spread the good news like a tonic.
And not before we get him dressed. Precisely. Thank goodness Mark has returned. But what's he doing up on the water tower? Everyone in town hears the news and runs to find out more. Mark, be careful. Come on down, honey. It's it's okay. Come down. Mark, is it not cold up there? It must be so cold. Is it slippery? Is there ice up there? Bert, help me get him down. Mark! Mark, come down here where we can help you. If you come down, we can get you some clothes. Oh, it definitely looks chilly from here. Come down. Okay, what's what's going on? What's yeah, let me through. Okay. Hey. Sheriff, Sheriff Jim, you're off. Mark. Oh, for God's sakes, Mark. Hey, uh, Mark, uh, turn around the other way, all right, and come down the ladder, please. That's a little bit too much information for all of us. Sheriff, get a blanket, will you? Mark, just hold the ladder. You're going to be okay. Come on down. Okay, uh, he, I think he's starting to come down. Yeah, come on down. Yeah. Mark. Come on down. Someone take Dang. a picture for social media. Oh, God. Oh. I've already seen it on Facebook. Facebook. I think I'm going to go back up. No, come on, Mark. Hey, you're Mark. almost there. Come uh, down. Uh, come on, Mark. Uh, just a little you. bit more. Good to see a, you, a too, Rick. You'll, you'll excuse can... me if I don't shake hands. Hey, grab this, grab this Hi. Blanket. Hi, Mark. Hi, uh, I have your uh, underwear. Oh, well, uh, thank you. Here, you, before you step down, you can just go ahead and step um, in. To, I'll hold hey, them open I'll, for uh, you. I'll do I'll, that, Annika. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank okay. you. Okay. And, and thank I, you. I got them out of thank your you. uh, drawer. Oh, the... Uh, yeah, the one with the uh, notch in it. But and, anyway, and here's your jeans. Oh, well, and, thank and, you. Uh, and uh, a sweater uh, that's really soft. Uh, thank yeah, you, okay. Annika. Here, here, here. Thank I can... You. I, right. Thank you. All right. Mark, I'm surprised the cat let you in. Look at your back. You have scratches and... Bruce, what happened? You look like you've been scraped <clears throat> up. Mark, are you okay? Oh, we need to get some paramedics out. Oh, no, I'm I'm fine, really. It's no, I, it's, I know it's first aid. Monica, I can help you. thank you, but I'll, I'll be you fine. You look like really. you've been mauled or something. Ladies, ladies. Well, what happened? We've been looking for you for a week. Oh, Very worried. I didn't, I didn't want you to worry. I I got a little cabin fever, and I am so sorry. I got short with everybody. I took a walk around the mountains as best I could, and I. I got lost, I got turned around and pointed the wrong way down the jack hole and before I knew it I ended up in Austin, Bill. Austin? What? I mean, stayed a night in a hotel there. They have many nice hotels there. There's that one near that French restaurant where that I That was the one? Oh, I think that's that four stars. Yeah. Yeah. And when I came back... Hotels are convenient, aren't they, Mark? So I got turned around, I came back, and I got jumped by a couple of jippo loggers. They beat hell out of me. Give me a description of, of them. I'll get it out on the airwaves. No, God, it's it's all right. They they took off in an old Ford truck up the mountains. And they took I, your clothes. They took my clothes, took my That's wallet. And cruel. You don't want to find them and arrest them or anything. No, I'm just grateful I got out in one oh, piece. Oh, Mark, Mark, can I make you a cup of hot cocoa? I, I mean, was thinking maybe Mark could come back to my shack. I've got some hot cocoa. I'd make him some cornbread. Oh. I may take you up on that later, Mark. That was very kind of you. Rose, I am so sorry Don't about be the way sorry. I talked about things at the produce stand. Oh, I, gosh, no. We've just been really worried about you. Are you sure you're all right? I am. Well, is there anything I can do to help? Well, if that invite for Scrabble is still on, I'd take you up on it. <laughs> I think that would be wonderful. Well, what can we do yeah. right now? Uh, right now, really what I need is just some hot cocoa, some good cornbread, and a chance to rest. Okay. Nice to have you back, Mark. Uh, thank you, Sheriff Jim. It's good to be back. Très good to see you. Uh, Happy you're doing well. Thank you, Louise. Come on, Mark. Let's go. Yeah. So, uh, Mark. Mm-hmm. Austinville, eh? You are a perceptive man, Bert. That, and we didn't see your footprints at the bottom of the water tower. Oh. It's all right. I'm here for you, mate. You can tell me the truth any time, okay? You know, my mother... She had her best friend, Eula, whenever things got interesting. Well, I'll be your Eula. Let's go over to your shack for a bit. What I'm really wanting is something warm to drink and something warm to eat. Let's go. Ah. Flash. That's all the time we have for this episode of Broken Alaska. It was produced at the studios of Space 101.1 and starred Lisa Kaufman as Louise, Paul Einhorn as Brick, Julie Bragg as Heather O'Hearn, Don Taylor as Sheriff Jim, Michael Crowley as Mark, Carrie Aguila as Rose, George Birch Wirtz as George, Mike Fuller as Bert and the announcer. It was directed by Carrie Aguila from an original idea by Carrie Aguila. Sound design by Mike Fuller and music by audionautics.com. We'd tell you what's coming up next time on Broken Alaska, 
but since it's improvised, you'll know as soon as we do.